All right, so um, now we are kind of getting into the really big and complex jump. This is where a lot of concepts is kind of flying around. So you got the basics introduced, you got some methods and some for loops and some way of making variables and stuff like that. And you got the understanding of scope and if statements. And now you have, now we have to take a jump. It's a leap in how you structure your code. So this is actually a strategy to make your code structured in a way where you actually uh, get a lot more kind of well kind of defined structures around what relates to what. So if you remember, I had the problem that we have like, like groups starts to appear up here in our punk game. We have some pose X and that is really a bad name because now we have a bad X and what's the difference between pose X and bad X? Yeah, pose X is related to the ball. So yeah, it should probably have, of course, should have called it ball X. That would have been better. But the magic here is actually that you can start to kind of make a hierarchy of kind of what groups are the values in. So if you take, for example, this here and this here, we can actually start to make what's called classes and objects. And classes and objects is a, is a way you make a classification and that classification you can turn into an object. So if we take the groups, there's some stuff here that kind of relates uh, to each other, there's some opponent stuff I don't know where to put, and some score stuff I don't where to know where to put yet in this game. But if you look at it here, you actually this group here is about the bat, and this group is about the ball. So now we can actually start to kind of convert that into an, an a, a classification. We can say class ball, and then we can say let's group that, and then we have another classification here called bad and we can actually group that as well. So what we're doing here is actually making a generic classification of what a ball is and a generic class classification of what a bat is. And by doing so, and then I would probably change pose x just to x and y because that's fine. And here it becomes redundant that it's a bat, so it can just be like that. Bad X and bad DX. So it's kind of the same but different because we're going to put logic into this at some point. So we do like this just to make it similar. So we have these two classes and actually these are very similar now but they're going to be very different later so we don't want to combine them. So we have a ball and we have a bat and it has some, some values to it. So it's some Y and some X, X and Y. And then I want to just move x up here because I want to have x, y, x, y, and x, y, and x, y. And the reason we can do this is because it allows us actually to multiply these guys here up to multiple elements. So I can have more than one ball, I can have one, more than one bat. And that means I can actually fix the opponent y here down here, I could actually kill that one. And also I can have a score for each bat, so I can say float score in here, and then each bat will have its own score. So where this comes in handy is especially when you work with more advanced games and, and, and that means you are one step above Pong and you start to have something like Asteroids. So Asteroids has a little guy here that runs around, he shoots some bullets out, he hits some Asteroids and these Asteroids, there are multiple of them. So that means these Asteroids are actually different classes or different objects of the same classification. So let me say that again different objects of the same classification. Then we have this little guy here, he has one single player game, so there's one class of him, one object, one instance of that class of the little uh, player that can turn around. And then you have some bullets here, and then you have a bullet classification, and you have multiple objects from that classification. So this is where classes and objects comes into play. And the way it does that is that we need to initiate these so we need to kind of change quite a lot in our code. And the question is, should I change in the code or should I um, write it from scratch? Or what would be a good strategy to do here? Do, 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 do. I actually think for this little session here, before we jump into multiple objects, it's okay just to kind of objectify our classes, we make classes out of our little punk game, and then we'll jump to some asteroids kind of game in the next tutorial. That's how we're gonna do it. So 
Um, here we have a ball and a bat, and then I need an instance of these two. And the easiest way to do that is to say ball. Oh, and one error I have is when it's a classification, it's always a big letter in the beginning, and when it's a variable, it's always a small letter in the beginning. So it has to be big B and B big bad. So I need my ball or the ball. That's the ball we're playing with. We're only playing with a single ball in this game, so that's fine. And then we need a bad. We need one bad. Actually, we have two here, but let's start with one. Um, so we can call it player, bad, new, bad. So now we have what we're saying is this is an instance. This is an instance of a ball based on the classification of what a ball is up here. So this is a ball based on the classification up here. And this is the object. So this is the class and this is the object of that. And then it's complaining. Oh, maybe it's just because I it should be big. All right, so that's okay. Then leave that out for now. We're not going to think about this. So the, the opponent is not going to be there yet. We just have one player. Uh, it's going to be there, but it's going to run on some old uh, code because we haven't really done anything about it yet. All right, so the state machine is the same, but what we have to change is the game screen. So we jump down to the game screen and we say, all right, so processing is nice. It tells us when we have some problems here. And these poses were a part of uh, the ball. So instead of writing pose y, we can write ball.y. Uh, and that is going to be the ball.y. Um, global wearable does not exist. The ball. Ball hasn't flowed x and y. Why are you complaining about that? Is that really true? Or is it just a weird error? Let's see if it becomes happy at some point. Strange. Really? What did I do wrong? The ball, new ball, and it has. Oh! Yeah. It has to be small letters for floats, so this is wrong. So we have to do this. This, this, and this. All right, so now the syntax should be right. So the ball dot y equals the ball dot y plus the ball dot, uh, dot dir y. So this is dot notation. So for because we're turning it into a class, we're going to use dot, and that enables us to get access to the y value of the object, the instance of the object, the ball, which is an instance of the classification ball. Yes, I know, this is scary and confusing and you have to look at it and rewind this video a million times to understand it. So uh, have fun with that. So I have to make sure I'm not making big errors here. I think I just did because this one has to be dy and this one has to be like that. And then we have the x-axis. So it should be something like that and then like that and then all right, processing is acting up. Don't do that. Um, I just double checked that I did it right. Yes, I did. And then we have pose Y there. And then suddenly now it's the bat. So that is a um, player bat, we call it. That is player one or the active player. And it said Y here, right? I think it did. The ball dot uh, y, player bat dot y, and then we have uh, the ball. What was that one? That was a pose x, and that's the ball dot x, and then we have the player player bat dot x, and then we have dear x. The bat has been hit and then it's turning the direction, so that is player bat uh, now the ball dot dx should be one. And um, here it's um, pose x, so that's the ball dot x. If it's, it's you know outside the screen, then we should use. And we should move the ball into the middle. 
do that here and then we should and then the x and y should be small so it's happy and then we have the, the ball dot y and then we have the player bat dot y and it should be a small y player bat dot x yeah, we're just gonna do this y dot x player bat dear y player bat dear x good and we have that bat dot x that should be the new object bat player bat dot y and this one should be the bat dot x and oh, the bat dot y why is that one complaining looks right to me bad it's just a leftover where it doesn't update properly the bad dot x bad dot x does not exist what are you talking about That that why it does exist. What are you talking about? Float bad x equals zero might be just some leftover where it's confused. We'll leave it there and see if it. Then we have the bad dot dy, and we have the bad dot dot dy, and then we have the bad dot dx dot dx and then we have the bad dot dx uh, and now I'm doing something wrong right because this is no it's correct it's the bad all the way through everything is moved with the bad with the keys so here and then this one down here dot dear all right so in theory, what I've done now is I've converted everything, but I see a lot of red lines, so I'm curious where I miss something. Let's see. Okay, there's still some leftovers here and there where I didn't change the big and small y's and stuff like that. Let's see how many there is. Tell me one more errors. Then it, we end here, where I don't understand why there's no the bat dot x. And that's the ellipse. Oh, this should actually be the ball. But I should. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> the ball. Sorry about that. That's because I'm moving, changing a lot of stuff here. So in the next video, we're gonna do it from the scratch because this is just to kind of introduce you how you can make objects in dot notation. And this is maybe too intense to understand from the beginning so this is why i have an error okay now i got it i hope you guys spotted it before me because when you do programming like this it's very often that the guy looking over the shoulder of the person writing the code actually kind of spots the the errors before the guy actually writing the code does so so we press the key here and then we actually should have something similar we don't yet all right so clearly Clearly there's something wrong. I'm moving the ball instead. That's of course because I'm using the ball instead of play a bat. Silly me. So let's fix those. So the key press should be the play a bat. Boom, boom. All the way down. And then we run it again and see if it fits. Run it, run it, all right, all right. So, so. Something is working, except we don't have. This one is not working yet, so we need to figure out what we did wrong with the player bat. The player bat is not moving. Boom, 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 boom. So, somewhere we added. 
ball, the ball, the ball, that's correct. And then there should be a player bat, equals player bat, that is also correct. And player bat, direction y, minus one, x, direction x, zero, zero, it looks okay. So what is it that doesn't make it run? Mm. Play a bad. Oh, silly me. Something is wrong here at least. So I had an X where I needed a y, uh, y where I needed an X, and there might be more of those. So we'll see how many there is. We'll just run it again and see what happens. So also one rule is, now you saw me changing a lot of stuff here because I wanted to introduce the concept, and clearly I was too fast in, in, in introducing it. But never ever do what I just did, which is at least it's really, really hard to do this change without making quite a lot of errors that you have to fix afterwards. And it can be really hard to find the errors. It's a lot easier to run the program uh, every time you kind of change something, then run the program and kind of make an iterative structure. So the next tutorial is going to be like that. That's going to be like I build on top slowly like I did on the first tutorial, building asteroids. All I just wanted to hear was to kind of show you guys how, uh, how we... Um, how uh, how kind of get a basic introduc introduction of how you can turn it into a class that's called class ball and class bad and how you then use the dot notation to kind of structure it. So as you see, it's not that different from what we had. The only difference here is that we use dot notation, dot notation, dot notation, and so forth. So we say the ball dot x, the ball dot dx, and that means we have a group of values here. So let me just show you something. So if I write the ball, then I can write dot x, then I get y, I get the y axis. Where a y value, I can write dot x, dx, and I get the dx value, and I can write the dy value, and then I get, get the y value. And one added feature of this, this is when we then have this up and running, we can then start adding methods to our classes. So these classes can actually have methods. And one good one to write is one that's called draw me. So that's a method that's going to be called uh, when I want to draw the bat. So inside this I can actually put all the code down here that has anything to do with the bat, uh, to drawing the bat. So let's say what is actually drawing the bat. This one is drawing the bat and this one is some movement. So we'll take both up and then we'll just separate it up here. So then we have a void update me and I call the me and that's that's not it's not pretty to call the me but the reason I'm doing that is I'd rather call them draw and update but um, but if I say update me then the problem is that we already have a draw down here and this draw relates to the kind of the global draw of the whole uh, processing sketch and this one is draw inside the bat. So this is inside the scope. Remember the scope problem. You have to understand the scope problem. This is inside the scope bat. And the problem here is that if I just call it draw you will be confused. So I hope it simplifies a little bit that I call it draw me. I can call it whatever I want to. And now the next step I want to do if if processing once allows me to. Thank you. I just cut it out of here because I want to give it a new tab that's called uh, bat. Was the bat right? Ooh, and I cannot paste it anymore. Oh yeah, there it came. Okay, it's kind of jumpy right now. That's confusing. Sorry about that. So we have a bat here that's in the bat kind of tab and it should be of course be... Can I rename it? I can. Oh, and then I need to save it. Let's save it then. And then call it number four, and call it uh, objects and classes. And then we're gonna say rename tab. Oh, that was not what I wanted. Rename, and then we're gonna say bat with a big B. So now we have a class called bat, and it's in the tab called bat. And then that's in a separate file actually in, in your 
in your code. So we're gonna add another one called here, another tab. If I'm allowed to do it, it has to like this live compiling, live uh, checking if the code is correct, which kind of makes it stuck sometimes when I'm also doing screen recording. Come on, wake up, little, little processing. Oh, there it came. Okay, new tab, and we call that ball. And then we have to wait again because then when I paste it, it needs to figure out what to do with it. Come on, come on. I cannot really do anything because it's kind of stuck there, so we just have to wait. Come on. There it is. Good. So now I have a ball and a bat, which is in a tab here. And in the bat, I have an update me and a draw me. And then I need to go down and remember to call these two methods because I as you I cut out the the code for that. So where is the uh, that's the opponent part, that's the ball. So there's no kind of bad coming comment. So we'll just write bad here and we'll say um, player bad dot update me player bad dot draw me and this is also a quite significant change in the code we're doing now so we took everything that had to do with drawing and put into the drawing and everything that had to do with the updating and kind of moving the bat I called it update maybe I should call it move that might have been better put in here so let's see all right so we're getting some of the code from what relates to the bat, we're slowly moving in there, so we don't have to kind of have it out here in our general score. So it's nicer just to say, oh, draw me. Okay, that's where the bat is drawn. Okay, I have to go in here, and that's where it is. So we kind of make this hierarchical structure and kind of structure our code better. Then we have some collision detection with the ball and the player. That's more complicated because that's two objects we have to com uh, compare to, so we don't want to do that. We could... Uh, do some check on the ball here, some about moving that in as well. Bad mists. And then we have the ball width. That's the bouncing weight. That could at least come in into the ball. So we could add some stuff here to the ball. We could have an uh, void update me and a void draw me. And then we can take the, um, the ball, or everything that has to be do with the ball, this stuff here, that's the x and y axis of the ball. We put into update me, and then we have the draw part of the ball, that's this one. We can put into draw me as well. And then remember to press command T, so it's structured nicely. And then we can go in here and we can say, as we have bat, we can say, we can say ball. And we can say the ball dot update me, the ball dot draw me. So we have the same code, but now we kind of move the stuff into some sub methods inside the class ball, which are here now. Mm -hmm. Still working, a little bit quirky as always, you know, you can get the ball behind it and stuff like that and it can go over the net, but there's definitely something going on. Oh, there, I moved it on top of it, which wasn't good. Another small bug we have to solve as well, I think. Somehow I managed to move it above somehow. All right, so many small bugs, but the kind of the core concept is here. We have moved, we kind of separated some of the code into separate classes, which means that slowly we can move into having everything that has to do with the bat inside the bat and everything that has to do with the ball inside the ball. And the next level or the next time I'm going to use this, I want to actually take a kind of deep breath and then slowly write down uh, the essence of an asteroid game based on this concept. So right now this is what I'm gonna show you now. I don't think there's much I can change on this one that would 
add significantly to it. I could add some comments, uh, draw the net, um, check for collision between player one and the bat. Um, the bat has been missed and the ball is outside on the left. And then we have the update and draw, and then we have some opponent logic here. And then we have some the ball here. Oop, I have it twice now. Oh, I copied the wrong thing in here. Oh, that's bad. Bad. Yes, that's correct. Oh, sorry about that. This is not, this is the other opposite opponent bad. And this is the ball. Stupid me. Yes. Good. So, and this is also a good time to kind of point out the importance of commenting your code. So let's see what happens now. It still seems to work. So, Basic introduction, basic code for kind of converting the punk game into a, a um, into a kind of a class-based system. And next time we're going to play around with the asteroids and turning them into kind of a structure. And this is where it really comes into play because then you will have multiple uh, asteroids, multiple bullets, and there you really, really need to have your classifications to multiply them and make multiples of them. We can of course make multiple balls and stuff like that in this one as well.